Citizen Television from Indianapolis, Indiana, Indiana. We're going to go to Edinburgh in Scotland where we find David Itali. Now, his story is incredible, folks. Former British Army soldier, Lance Corporal, served in the British Army in places like Baghdad and Afghanistan, lost his leg when his vehicle ran over a landmine or IED in Afghanistan. He's now a veteran of the British Army. He was living in Manchester. That's right, you're Manchester United and Manchester City fans. He was living there when the lockdown came about. And he had to move from Manchester all the way to Edinburgh, Scotland, because he says he's never been so scared. This for a man who faced an enemy in the worst part on the planet. David, good to see you, my friend. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good to see you, Jeff. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. So listen, you were you were telling me earlier on, you were actually in a supermarket. You had just gone undergone surgery recently, right? Yes, yes, I did have. I went through my 34th surgery on my leg. 34th? Yes. So you were in a wheelchair and you were in a supermarket. Tell us what happened in, after that. Um. It was just the case when everything all started. I was in a hospital in Manchester. And um, when everything started, um, they had to actually discharge me from hospital. So everything was going on. And um, I was in a supermarket and I was on a wheelchair where you're trying to rush and get stuff. And people pushed me off the wheelchair and I fell down. And it was quite funny because we were fighting over toilet paper. So... How, how did you, how did that make you feel, David? I mean, for someone who has faced a mortal enemy in places like Afghanistan, and now you're in a supermarket and they're pushing your wheelchair, pushing you to the ground, how, how did you feel? Um, it was actually embarrassing, and I just started laughing because that's when I knew how serious this thing is. Because I've served Afghanistan and Iraq, where you can see the enemy. And right now, you're fighting something that you can't see. And you, while in the British military, you had been trained for biological warfare, hadn't you? How did they train you for that? So the biological welfare is the one they you, you're suited in something called an NBC suit, and you're given a mask, and they, they throw you into a room where they just throw all different chemicals just in case that... In the world, if you try and face an enemy who's using that, you're well prepared. And it was absolutely the worst thing that I've ever, ever experienced because it chokes you. It makes your eyes so watery. It's like you can't breathe. And I just feel like right now I feel like with the virus and everything that's going on, I feel like right now we are, we are facing a war and an enemy that we can't see. Because it's easy to see an enemy when you're in Iraq and Afghanistan, but you find... The worst enemy was the IEDs, the things that we can't see, mm. the things that were blowing us left, right, and center, the one that blew me up. And tell me something, David. You, when you were undergoing surgery, you were saying earlier on, the hospital became overwhelmed with patients, didn't it? Um, yes, because on, in the hospital, they actually didn't actually tell us that coronavirus victims had already started coming in. But they had to take me through the back door of the hospital because they didn't want me, because I have an open wound, they didn't want me to contaminate anything because now I'm, I'm, I'm in a threat where it's the virus, you're looking after the infection on the wound. So there are so many things that are going on that they had to just to make sure that I just get home safely. And then from Manchester, you decided, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to Scotland. Is that what you did? Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the first thing that I did. I had to go back to my home in Edinburgh in Scotland. And then um, coming here, I thought I was really safe. But a few doors just down my street, we found there's a coronavirus victim. The street has been cordoned off. You know, I can't leave. I'm disabled. You know, so it's really difficult right now. Are you, are you scared? Do you, do you feel scared, David? Absolutely. Everyone is scared. Anyone who tells you that they're not scared they would be absolutely lying because today, Jeff, we've just had a death of a lady who's 21 years old. She died of coronavirus. She didn't have any health complications. And when I hear people saying that coronavirus can only kill people who've got weak immune system and things like that, people should be really careful because 
you just don't know. You just don't know when you get it. When you get it, you just don't know. It can be your last time. So people should just be vigilant and make sure that they just take care of what the government is saying. Because right now in the UK, from yesterday, we had about 422 deaths. Mm -hmm. Now we have 435, you know. And David, in all your years in the military, all those years fighting uh, the enemy, did you ever think that you'd now be confronting an invisible enemy? Did you ever think in your wildest dreams? To be honest, I've never ever thought me being in Iraq and Afghanistan, being in, you know, um, Basra and now Helmand province, it was so easy to fight the Al-Qaeda and the Taliban because you could see them. And the worst enemy that we couldn't see were the bombs that they were putting underneath the ground, which people like me drove over, some people being blown up into pieces. And that just took my mind that now we are fighting a virus that you can't see. You don't know where the enemy is. You don't know where the enemy, whether it's in front of you, beside you, at the back, in the air, you just don't know. And what message would you have for your fellow Kenyans over here, some of whom don't believe that this corona thing even exists what do you tell them to be honest um to my brothers and sisters back home i have huge family i've got friends there i would just urge them just to listen to what the government the guidelines they're putting in place i've listened to what the president has done today which i i absolutely recommend him for that and people should be just very very careful don't be ignorant don't just think that because you're praying to God that you're, you're going to be protected for coronavirus. God can only protect you if you protect yourself. So it has to start with you before you start pointing fingers at anyone else. You need to look after yourself. You need to look after your loved ones, the people, because the greatest humanity in life is preserving life. So this is not a video game. This is real life. I like that, David. This is not a video game. This is life real life before i let you go david there's one more thing that you had told me earlier on your story reads like a script straight out of a hollywood movie you are actually writing your life story right now but there's more to that once your book is published what's going to happen tell me um so right now i'm currently writing my book um and the book what i'm going to do the sales i'm going to come to kenya god willing when everything is settled down I'm going to come and sell the book. I will not be taking any funds. So I'll be working with the women who've lost their husbands in Somalia, the KDF members. I want to start opening for them businesses. I want to see them feeding their children because I know what it's like to be in the front line. I know what it's like to hold a weapon when you're fighting an enemy. And I would just like to help the widows in Kenya, the KDF members, those ones who've reached out to me about suffering from mental health and things like that. So that's my next mission. And that's what I'm planning to come and do. But another message that I would say to people, let's fight this together. You can only beat this when we fight together. Lance Corporal David Ogega, we salute you, my friend, and hang in there and we wish you all the very best of luck. And um, Godspeed, my friend, Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff, for having me. And I wish my brothers and sisters back home in Kenya, everyone around the world, just to take care of themselves and be safe and listen to everything that people are saying and just protect yourself at all, all time. Put your guard up. Don't let your guard down. Put it up. This is not a video game. This is real life, right? Yes, this is not a video game. This is real life. My and man. when it hits next to your door, that's when you realize that this thing is for real. That's it's right. not playing. Thanks so much, David. Appreciate that, man. God bless you.